Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 3, Episode 22, Thoughts. This episode is called Ascension. So, spoilers for everything MCU leading up to and including this episode, but not for anything MCU that came out after this episode first premiered. Another episode I love, and uh, yes, let's dive right in. So, yeah, Daisy did indeed go to... Ah, uh, what's the word? She uh, she was going to work with Hive again, but Lash made her impervious, and then the other element of someone who's, you know, really addicted, if the dealer suddenly doesn't have anything for the, the junkie, then the the rage gets turned against the the dealer Let's see and <laughs> i i like he he tries to start another monologue and she's like enough you know and uses her powers fine no more talking and let's see yeah a very very cool close quarters fight with her using her quake powers, but also like martial arts moves, and he's using his super strength, and yeah, you know she she he he says you you can't kill me or that won't kill me or something, and she says I don't want to kill you I want to make you suffer, you know she wants revenge for what he's done, and yeah you know he says. It's not bones that keep me moving, it's the, the parasites. Which, you know, yeah, that's that's why they've had such trouble killing him, even slowing him down. You know, really since since Hive was able to feast on a bunch and had, you know, like honey on his face and you know, surrounded by a bunch of charred corpses, since then no one has really been able to do much damage to him, so th this is a very logical way for it to, to end. And I really love the, instead of him being like, no, my plans have failed, he just, he sits and is like, death is the one thing that's eluded me for all this time, you know, just, yeah. You know, he's he samples people and experiences, and this is a new one for him. And... Right. Um, I've, I've said this before and I'll probably say it again. It is a great way to close off a season to have of, of this you know, and a season of an action show. If, your char if, if the good guy characters have had a base, have the base be attacked by the enemy. You know, have them force them to fight on like home turf. Like usually shield are like they're they're operating out of the base and then they're like deploying people in the the places that are necessary but here they're they're on the back foot you know let's see Ma makes it feel bigger and yeah elena took a, a bullet for mac but you know she thought that she'd be able to stop it fully and yeah, then we get the titular ascension, and yeah, very cool that Fitz and May did manage to get onto the Zephyr. She said, "Get me some rope in case Daisy isn't able to stop Hive." So yeah, and yeah, very clever that the heat is is you know works as as camouflage, and. Yeah, you know, it's it's a classic, this shot of, like, some creepy, like, character or creature, like, really close to, and then you have, like, a woman's face, like, hiding and, and, you know, clearly scared, but she has to stay completely still. There's a chance that the creature won't be able to, to spot her, that kind of thing, you know. Lots of classic horror, you know, has, has something quite like that, so, yeah, very cool to see it here. Every so often the show goes for like horror instead of action. And I am I'm I live for those moments. And 
I like that Radcliffe, you know, so, so Radcliffe's like, oh, so this, this is the hand that Fitz was, wow, uh, did, did do you know if he's ever gonna, like, finish it, and, you know, Colson's like, oh, yeah, yeah, he did, uh, th this is it, you know, and, and Radcliffe's like, oh, you know, like, kid in a can store, and he's like, oh, my God, this is amazing, just, you know, dude, it's still attached to him, like, just, yeah, that was, that was fun, and, it, you know, very in character, and, yeah, he realizes, you know, the heat, is because the the primitive see in infrared vision, clever girl. Which you know normally that's about dinosaurs, but okay. <laughs> and I like you know and and yeah, Radcliffe explains the theory, and the others are like, you don't actually expect us to risk this on on your hunch. And he's like, it's a scientific theory. Okay, look, fine, I'll be the first one. You know that's how much that's how confident he is about the idea. And yeah, he, he gets out there, and yeah, the, the primitive can't see him, so he moves, and Coulson's like, follow him. He has no idea where he's going. And yeah, you know, May points out to, to Daisy, you know, all you can do now is try to balance the scales. I really thought that Fitz was bluffing, I did not realize that he was legitimately just trying to make sure to maneuver the situation so he'd be able to to use and and like he says, I I told you like several times, you know, just he's got he's got something. We can't quite make out what it is, but you know, and he's like, I'll, I'll just I'll put this down, you know, there's I, I hid a weapon somewhere on here. You know, you're you're not gonna be able to find it. You won't see it coming, and suddenly, you know, he's does the the move and and yeah we see yeah he made a, a cloaked pistol and it's the kind of thing of like yeah no reason why he wouldn't be able to do that if if they can cloak like a quinjet not really any reason wait is a quinjet or was it the bus anyway if you can cloak a plane cloaking a pistol just means you know you gotta you gotta make it smaller but that's you know that's possible like you know the reason we have smartphones today the the reason that the it can get so small is because they had to make you know relative they had to make stuff smaller to to send astronauts into into space you know and occasionally get them back and yeah you know so so it's it's a very logical yeah next next step and See. Yeah, uh, this was as far as we got. And um, I'm not sure what that means. Anyway, yeah, the <clears throat> very clever that, you know, now. Colson has the the arm remote, and yeah, he tells Radcliffe, yeah, Fitz was inspired by, you know, your, yeah, the person who was working for you, who had a remote, you know, an arm that could control reinforcements and that sort of thing, calling reinforcements. Really cool to see the full like squid face, like we've seen it from like behind maybe slightly from the side but we haven't seen like full on until now and yeah it was worth the wait i i'm really glad they built up to it and you know i i sincerely doubt we're ever gonna see hive again unless i don't know hypothetically like time travel or or um hologram or something, but, you know, we're not going to see this hive again, at least. You kind of got to, you got to cover your bases when you're talking about the MCU, because they can, yeah, stuff can, characters can, keep, can be brought back. And, yeah, very, very cool that it was a hologram, and it's such a great, because he just met, he just mentioned the, the um, T Titus Wellower character, you know, so, yeah, that was, that was a hint for the audience, and you know when we heard him say his name, you know, yeah, it puts it, it puts us in our mind. Oh, right, the guy who did the hologram thing. So when it's revealed as a hologram, it's like, 
you know, I told you. You didn't know that I told you, but I did tell you. It So it doesn't come out of the blue. Because that's the, you know, stuff like that could very easily just feel like, what, how did that, you know. And <laughs> Coulson does yet another reference to, to original trilogy, you know. Obi-Wan Kenobi. Uh, you know, save us, Obi-Wan Kenobi. You're our only hope. And... See. Holy crap, I just I can't believe I, I botched that. Let's see. I sh I should be able to get that right. Help me, Obi-Wan Kenobi. You're my only a oh, crap. I it's been too long since I watched the movie. Anyway, the um, Yeah, very cool when Lincoln fights James and James did manage to, to set off one thing and injures Lincoln and I really appreciate Lincoln telling Daisy you know I think we have to work on ourselves before we can work on us or on each other something like that and that is very true and I really appreciate it, it appearing it's it's incredibly important there's a lot of people who in the long term could be really happy together but you got to have yourself sorted out. You cannot count on a partner to sort you out. You know, you need you need to to be at at your best before you enter a relationship. And that sucks. It sucks. You know, sometimes you you meet someone and you're like this is the person that this is how I end up feeling complete. But it's it's not going to be or if it is, it means because it's because you end up taking from them, not even intentionally so, but yeah. So so really appreciate this very yeah. Um very psychologically accurate message here. And it is really heartbreaking that Daisy blames herself when really, you know, it it just brought him to the realization that he should have gotten to. You know, they've been kind of dancing around this for a while now. He wasn't able to be completely honest with her about who he at least used to be. You know, he did, he was, um, he was too careless with a, with a, he, he, let's see, he drunk drove and almost killed a, a girl, you know, and, you know, she was not, I, I suppose before Hive, before the Sway, she was okay for for like dating someone, but he definitely needed to, to sort certain things out completely. Before, you know, it's it's difficult to tell uh, you know someone that you're dating that kind of thing about yourself, but it's also necessary. And then we have the. Yeah, I, I like the intercutting between Daisy and Coulson explaining the, the plan. <laughs> and Mac, I see you got yourself another shotgun axe, which, yeah, not ne never going to say no to that. Um, yeah, and another great fight scene. Love the long take. I just amazing that they, like, they've done other long takes. But like the the um, let's see what's the word for yeah the um, they've they've done other long takes but usually it's with less characters let's see I think I think Daisy was in the other ones was there maybe one with May. But yeah, this time it has like several of the of the shield agents. And yeah, Daisy sets up the, the you know places the, the warhead, but Hive shows up. Very nice of him for for the for the network's sake that he just stood there awkwardly in complete silence for the entire ad break as she was like tying the you know t tightening the thing for the for the warhead 
and yeah, Lincoln sacrifices himself. No, you know, he knew that Daisy was going to, you know, if he didn't do it first. So yeah, here we here we are, and yeah, he he, you know, uses his his power to to push Daisy out of the the um, Quinjet and the uh, and then he fries the controls which is legitimately clever you know that's the, you know how do you stop someone that you can't you know no matter how much you like blow them up or whatever they they keep coming back well if you lock them in a small place get it shoot it into space and then blow that thing up you know hypothetically like, let's say that hives that, that some of the hive parasites actually survive what are they gonna do F fly back you know that's so so yeah and yeah you know she feels Daisy feels that Lincoln is stepping all over her moment you know taking her density I mean destiny and let's see Uh, yeah, she, you know, she's like, you can't just die for me like this. It's, it's wrong. You ripped it off from Captain America one and Agent Carter season one. And seriously though, I don't know how, but it keeps really emotionally resonating for me. These, this is the third time the MCU has done this in not that many years, and somehow it just works each time. And yeah, he he realizes this was the first time he said, "I love you." And yeah, you know, Hive is there's let's see, there's that thing about um, uh, yeah, the <clears throat> Hive. Uh, there's the thing, yeah, yeah, uh, Lincoln says, you know, don't bother trying to sway me, it's not going to matter, and Hive says, there's no reason to, we're connected in another way, we'll, we'll share something else, something that I haven't gotten in the, the you know, hundreds of years, a death. And yeah, you know, he's paying for his mistake. No, he's paying for all our mistakes. So they turned Lincoln Campbell into Jesus Christ. Lisa's Christ. Which is something American media does love to do. Does love it some Jesus imagery. At least it's nowhere near as bad as the DCEU. And yeah, the vision comes to fruition. And we jump ahead by six months, and <laughs> Daisy has entered her punk chick phase, which, yeah, I mean, she looks good. I, I wouldn't be, I'd, I'd be, I'd be lying if I if I claim that I that I didn't think you know she she looks really really cool. They like, they keep like changing her look. In a way that feels, you know, and it also like it does tell us, yeah, she's she's somewhat back to this rebel thing, you know, she's helping people in in this secret way instead of working with with Shield. So, yeah, she she's been through a lot. It makes sense for her to try something else, you know. What what she'd been doing until recently hadn't worked. She's been with Shield for three whole seasons now. She joined S.H.I.E.L.D. at the very start of season one. Like, by the end of the first episode, basically, she, she joins S.H.I.E.L.D. Yeah, you know, the each season takes place over... Well, actually, yeah. Each season takes place over a while, and then there's, like, months in between. So, I guess by this point, maybe a year or more, that's a long time to be doing the same thing if you don't feel like it's working for you, you know, that's that that might be a sign to 
to do something else with your life. So I, you know, I can imagine some people were frustrated by this change, but it feels very organic and natural to me. Like, let's hypothetically, let's, uh, let's see, who would it... Yeah, I think if Fitzsimmons quit at the end of this season, I, it would be like, I, that doesn't feel like it came organically from where, because they, they seem very happy at, at S.H.I.E.L.D., you know, there have been problems in, in earlier seasons, but by this point, they seem very happy, very settled there. And then we have the... Yeah, so she gives the Robin to to the, the little girl, um, which is not scaring the little girl. And, yeah, uh, uh, Polly Hinton is very... You know, very happy to receive the the help, and you know, I I really appreciate the line. You know, she points out they treat me like I'm I'm kind of an outcast or something like that. When you know, she didn't do anything wrong. You know, but sadly, sometimes there are social consequences just because you knew someone who did. You know, and and he also didn't. Um, I want to say his name was Charles. Charles Hinton. He didn't mean to do anything, but yeah, you know, something, this this thing about him that he couldn't really control himself hurt other people, and now she's paying the price for that, you know, which was not at all what he wanted. And, and yeah, you know, Polly thanks Daisy, and Daisy says, I'm just fulfilling a promise. And it's true, she, you know, as Charles was dying, she did promise him she'll take care of his daughter, protect his daughter, something like that. And then Coulson says, we have to call the director. So that's, that's interesting. I'm looking forward to next season, seeing who the new director is. But yeah, um, I, I can see how, like, some of the things he did in these last few episodes might have gotten him demoted. So, yeah, the, the you know, very enticing twist. You know, I mean, he did lie to the the um, you know to get that uh, code to to turn off a missile. There might be consequences for that. And, yeah, in the post credit scene, we see that Dr. Ratcliffe is a free man. You know, the, the hearings have all, you know, turned out in his favor. There are some stipulations, but, you know, and that's, again, yeah, you know, as soon as he got a chance, he helped S.H.I.E.L.D. stop the primitives, stop Hive. If not for Dr. Ratcliffe, they would not have been able to, you know... Like, what, one thing, for example, would be the, he figured out the infrared, you know, so, yeah, incredibly important, and he helped, you know, he helped explain what the primitives can and cannot do, and, yeah, you know, I mean, it was self-serving, but he did do the right thing eventually, so... It, it does make sense that there would be this sort of... Yeah, again, it reminds me of, like, Werner von Braun. And... Let's see... Yeah, and... He talks about the LMD project, and that the thing they're celebrating is that it's Ada's birthday, which, yeah, that also... Very enticing for next season. Really looking forward to seeing that. Uh, let's see. I don't think they did say in the... Yeah, I think they just said LMD, not what it stands for. I know what it stands for. I'm almost 100% certain that's what they're doing at least. But I try to keep these episodes from... These videos on episodes from spoiling any future stuff. Even if it's just a guess. Now, uh, let's see. So, yeah, so some IMDb trivia. 
When Daisy's talking to Robin and her mother, she says she wanted to introduce him to a friend of hers who has a practice nearby. He likes animals too, she said. She was clearly referring, referring to her dad, who had been put through the Tahiti Protocol and given a new identity slash life, which, yeah, makes a lot of sense. He also was in, you know, in a situation where he inadvertently hurt people and really just needed help to get into a situation, uh, yeah, and let's see, yeah, uh, in Absolution, Coulson offered Lincoln a spot on the team, but Lincoln declined. When Mac asked what he planned to do instead, Lincoln said, see the world maybe, and then when Lincoln was with Hive in the Quinjet in space, Lincoln looks out and sees the earth, he says, I got to see the world, and... Right, the newspapers in the apartment refer to Daisy as Quake, which is her code name or alias in the comics. Mac finally gets his axe gun, if one does not count the duct tape one in Watch Dogs, which I'm not sure why one wouldn't, but okay. But yeah, I it's the sequel. It's I, I will never be unhappy about Max using an axe gun. And not just because it reminds me of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. And let's see. That is about it for this video. So tomorrow I will do a vlog on a Marvel TV show, but it will be season two of Agent Carter instead of season four of Agents of Shield. Because you know, technically, if I understand correctly. Season 2 of Agent Carter aired in the mid-season break of Season 3, but I really don't want to split up in you know partway through a season. I want to watch an entire season before I move on to, to something else. And I like Coulson calling Hive, Hive the Terrible, like Ivan the Terrible. Also a, you know, maniacal ruler who is very cruel and, and caused a lot of bodily uh, to torment <laughs> and I, I like Hive saying I'll shed this host and take you and march down to announce to the shield agents that I finally de succeeded in defeating the great Alvius. the day is won no need to remain concealed in the shadows yeah you sound just like me and 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 yeah also you know, killing me won't make the pain go away. Or will it? I can't remember. Also liked the, the part where Hive is just straight up, like, you know, he's he recognizes Daisy, but he can't quite place the, the name, and he's like, your name, it was something pretty, but not like the sky, like a flower. Daisy, which, as someone who has an ADHD diagnosis, yeah, that works for me, too. Just, you know gradually take take steps to, to get to the thing you know at, at first it's like okay I don't remember the exact thing but I remember it was related to this other thing let's see right and and the um, let's see yeah what happened Mac lit me on fire it's a long story and If May were here, she'd give me a very dirty look. Yeah. And and when yeah, Radcliffe is like, we make a pretty good team here at the strategic homeland. What comes after homeland? Just say shield. <laughs> and yeah, I will close it out with. I'm just a distraction. I said I was willing to die, sure, but I certainly don't want to. I picked up this little move from my misguided buddy, Blake. Figured I could get an egomaniac who'd been alone for a thousand years to chat. Plus, I always wanted to do this. Help me, Obi-Wan Kenobi. You're my only 